I'm playing with junk again. Someone asked me to power up some of the stuff I got last week. So here we are. It's a HB C7000 blade center. It is plugged in and I'm going to power up the beast. Three power supplies, six power supplies. Uh, the servers are not inserted yet. I wait until I configure the onboard administrator. That's the module here and here. There are two modules for redundancy. That's just a USB hub. I connected the serial port here to my laptop because uh, there is a password set from the customer. A password I don't know. I have here my serial port switching device that switches from a crossed to a straight cable and then two green lights are on everything is okay Supplies. Each one hot pluggable and extra long. They have 2200 or 2400 watts depending on the, on the model. If you want to remove this power supply, you have to shift the display to the side or for that power supply too. Normal position is in the middle because it looks good, it doesn't change the function at all. Um, we have enclosure settings here. So we can see the IP address, which is now set to uh, one that is in our uh, DHCP range. We have two onboard administrators, each one has its own IP address. I didn't set the second one because I don't need it. I accept that all. We can of course uh, change everything here. You can change it on the serial port or you can change it on the web interface as soon as the IP addresses are all right. I'm using PuTTY for the serial connections and as you see that oops, Mini Strator, which is the default login Oops, I was too slow and, uh, and of course I don't know the password so what I have to do now is to take my Swiss army knife or whatever you prefer and push that reset button here for five seconds. One, two, three, four, five. Something like that. And then we get a new screen. Lost password recovery. We type L and that's everything we have to do to reset the password for the for its default value. So the administrator module reboots now. It does the same countdown as on the front panel and now it writes the password that's it, here. Yeah. 
uh, we can note that down and after the first login uh, we can change that to whatever we like so let's see if it works at me me straighter password eight w c two n p a s all in big letters as it is written above and we're in uh, show show what show all okay show all that's a little bit a lot of text but you can store that print it whatever there's the whole setup that's not that interesting oops i can't stop it with ctrl c okay we let that run and then we change to the um, web interface so the web interface is loading the address is already there it's set dhcp get one from the from the server uh, i already made a new user named a because i don't want to type administrator 100 times with a simple password aaa So, and that's what it looks like when it's loading. It's all a little bit slow, but it works quite well. Okay. Now you see the front of the blade center with the power supplies. You see the back with the fans, power connectors, uh, Ethernet switches and the onboard administrator modules. And now I start to connect uh, the blades. It has recognized that some blades are in, but it doesn't know the model yet, so it takes a while to update the picture here. You hear the first two blades I have turned on. They can only turn on when they are recognized here as the correct model with uh, all the power settings and everything. And you have to wait until all this has filled up with the correct pictures. The 
ones here are the first one is health, so if this is green, everything is okay. You can turn to yellow or red if there is a hardware error or something else. UID is a, a, a light that blinks when somewhere, somewhere is uh, accessing the server to the remote uh, console port. Then we have one, two, three, four Ethernet ports. They turn on as soon as the Ethernet cards inside the server are ready. They all have link, so it's a, it's a link uh, light. These links go to the two um, Ethernet switches here. They have 16 ports inside and four ports outside here. So it's in total a 20 port switch and that's another 20 port switch. Uh, it has two ports or it has one port per uh, um, server um, shelf. But we have here servers that use uh, two shelves, so this is a, a double size or a full size plate and therefore we have uh, at least two Ethernet connections per server to one switch and to the other switch. We could install more switches and if more Ethernet connections are necessary. I'm sorry that I don't have a video capture software, but I think that works pretty well. So, if I want to connect to a server and see what it does, I select it here. The picture moves to the side. I select ILO, that's the internal remote uh, management uh, thing. Then I select one of the two consoles here. I prefer this one. Ah, uh, yes, yes. It's totally unsafe to do that, but I do it anyway. It's a lot of Java stuff around. It's a little bit annoying sometimes. And then we get a dark screen because the server is still well, this is, I think it's still doing self. No, it's already starting Windows. We can see that because we get the second pointer. The one is my local pointer and the other one is the remote pointer that follows it. So, okay, so Windows has already started on this one. So I cannot press Ctrl Alt Delete because if I do this on the laptop keyboard uh, I will get the task manager of the laptop so I have to do this from the menu here type in my password there are different ways to access the blades one is to connect VGA monitor direct directly to the onboard administrator, keyboard and mouse. You need a hub because we only have one USB port, but that's not a problem. Then we press print screen and we get a menu. That's the eight servers. I call them Win1 up to Win8. That's the Windows server name. I can select one of them. For example, blade number two. The negative side here is it takes a while uh, to connect because everything goes via the ILO module. 
sorry, Ctrl Alt Delete with the camera in the fingers is not uh, very easy. Okay, and it looks like any other kind of server because there is in fact no difference to a, a PC or a server except that this server here uh, sticks in a C7000 blade enclosure and we don't need any additional cables on the back side. Now we have here two blinking blue lights. That's the server um, on, on the local screen here. That's the server uh, I'm on with the laptop. So if I log out from that, if I close the application here, the light goes out and I always know on which server I'm working. The fastest way to get access to the server with a uh, with a monitor and a keyboard and a mouse is to attach this dongle here with this strange looking plug that goes to the front side here. This is a normal VGA monitor output. It has two USB and a serial port. And if you connect that, you get directly uh, the picture from your server. So you can change that to another server. And as soon as the monitor uh, has synchronized, we get that. Boom. Click. It's a slow, a slow monitor here, but yes. That's the fastest method of them all. Of course, you need physical access to the systems, but if you have it in the workshop like I do here, that's my preferred way to do it because all this remote access stuff, it always has delays and takes time to load. Okay, I have connected it to blade number three. Um, that one does now 32 tasks of safety at home because it has 32 cores. It's four processors, eight cores each. Then we have the next blade, also with 32 cores. This one is working on Einstein at home. I just started it, so it's still on zero. So in total I have here 256 cores. Uh, each blade, each of these eight blades has 256 gigabytes of RAM. And uh, I think I let it run overnight and maybe over the weekend next week. Okay, you may ask now, how do you set up eight servers in a short time. There are different ways. I could set up uh, a boot and install server and set up Windows from the or whatever operating system you like from uh, via the network. But I'm doing it in a more traditional way. I set up the first server normally with a CD-ROM attached to the USB or a USB stick maybe. And then I take a drive, when everything is uh, ready, I take one drive from the uh, server that is set up and take it over to the next server, because these drives are always a RAID 1, so each one is a copy of the other one. So if I remove one drive, the server is still running, but I can use that drive to boot the other server, and then, if both servers are running, I install a fresh drive in the empty slots and then the server will rebuild the disk or the RAID. They will copy the data from the good drive to the new drive. I 
and that's how it works. Okay, what I do first is I shut down the server. I want to take one drive away. I do this by pressing the button once. It shuts down now. You can see it on the screen. It has turned to yellow, that means standby. I take this drive away, put it in here, and start both servers. Now this server will complain that disk 1 has gone, and it will remind me to uh, replace it as soon as possible. This server has an exact copy of that server. Uh, he will complain that disk 2 is gone. It's missing here. Oops, you cannot see it. It's missing here. Disk 2, disk 1. And it tells me to replace disk 2 as soon as possible. So, let's see how that looks on the screen. From HP, G7 means you have to wait 7 minutes until something appears on the screen. Uh, to compare, a G5 was much faster. And on the G8 they changed something. They had a text before that. And after a couple of seconds the HP logo comes up. You see we have a lot of opterons with a lot of cores. Four processors, eight cores per processor. We have here 10 gigabit Ethernet or uh, virtual connect cards. I'm not sure which one is which. ILO3 is activated, has its own IP address. And here, Smart Array P410. One logical drive, and now there is the, the warning. You should replace port box 1, bay 1. Okay. Hit F2 continue, to continue. Escape. And when the weight control is ready, that's now, I can replace the missing drive. until it's ready. This one is already green. And now it starts blinking in a, about one second blinking. That means it's rebuilding. Load controller does everything by itself. So it's reading from that drive and it's writing to that drive. And we can do the same on this server. Okay, let's see what the RAID is doing. We start the Smart Storage Administrator. That's a program that comes with the RAID controller from HP. We have a P410 here. And it tells me uh, it has 26 percent is already copied. Let's refresh that. 27 percent here. So when this number goes to 100 then we are ready. We can remove again a disk and do the game, the same game again. Okay, what is Boink doing? Set it at home. Okay. What is the test task manager saying? It says 32 cores. They are not on 100%. I'm not sure why. Because um, maybe I have to wait until everything has... Uh, until enough uh, tasks are loaded or... Well, at least we go to 83, 86%. Yeah, it's almost 
it's climbing, it's going back. Okay, it does a little bit what it wants, but it does something. That's what I want. Uh, let's have a look at the power consumption of this uh, blade center. We have here power and thermal. We are using now, that's not the uh, present power, that's the power that we could draw in maximum. The question is how much do we have actually? Uh, system state is okay. Okay, maybe we are burning right now 4390 watts. Is that true? Is that the right number? Present power? Uh, no, power allocated, power available. Okay, that's the number, 4390 watts, that's what we are uh, consuming right now. No, that's... Okay, that's only the devices, we have the eight servers. Each one needs 480 watts, that's not too much for a server of that uh, power. 3840 watts is only the servers, but of course we have fans, we have switches, they also draw 50 watts. We have 10 fans, 500 watts, so 500 watts are only for the fans. Ah, that's it. That's the devices, interconnect base, that's everything on the back side. Fans. 500. Well, I'm not sure this is power allocated, so this is res uh, the power that the system reserves uh, for each device. It's not really the power that is actually uh, drawn. Here we get the Our graphic display, it updates every, what, five minutes? In five minute intervals for the last 24 hours. So we are had a peak at 5488 watts. Okay. Here the same for amps, but I'm not sure. Yes, line voltage 208, that's not correct. We have a line voltage of uh, 230 volts. So the amps, so that means it doesn't, doesn't actually measure the amps. It calculates the amps from the watts by uh, dividing to the line voltage here. Okay, we are heating this room quite a little bit. I just confirmed it, uh, there is a lot of hot air coming from the fans, really you could use it as a hair dryer. So the power limit, I don't know if you can see this, is 13,680 watts. That's the absolute limit, that's, that's all the power supplies combined together. Uh, yes, and we have now a little bit less than half that, well, maybe one third or something like that. These are the power management settings. We have, uh, for the AC, we have three settings, not redundant. We have uh, a one spare redundancy, power supply redundant, they call it or we have AC redundant. That means AC redundant is if you have uh, two different AC uh, grids, for example a UPS and a non-UPS, you can split the power supplies in three on power A and the other three on power B. So if one power fails, 
uh, three power supplies are off and the system is working with the other three power supplies. That means the maximum power you can uh, use is the combined power of three power supplies. Now what I chosen is power supply redundant, so we have six power supplies. One is regarded as a spare, so we have the combined power of five power supplies plus one spare, so one of the power supplies can fail and we still have uh, all, the, uh, all the power available. Or if we need the maximum power that is possible, we can choose not, not redundant. But if we choose that and we have a fully equipped uh, blade center, if one power supply fails, it will shut down one, maybe two servers because there is not enough power for everything. So that's a little bit a dangerous uh, setting here. We have uh, some other features here that are a bit unusual, maybe for the normal PC user. We have a dynamic power cap, that means we can set a limit. For example, if we have a, a weak mains uh, network here, uh, not here, but maybe somewhere else, you can set a limit, a power limit here, so the enclosure does not draw more power than what you set here. I have it at not set at the moment. Power cap means uh, if for some reason you install more blades or something, um, you can set a limit and if this limit is reached, uh, the, the service will dynamically reduce the CPU speed and maybe switch off some cores, but they are still running. Uh, on the power limit, if you want to install an additional uh, server, it just says, sorry, limit is reached, I cannot uh, accept uh, an additional server. That's the difference. Here you can power up all the servers, but maybe at a lower speed, and here Depending on the setting, you can probably just install four, five, six servers and then that's it. That's a screen from the power subsystem. You can see the actual power that is uh, drawn from each power supply. Total is here. That's the maximum capability. We have two 250 power supplies in here. Uh, there are stronger ones, 2400 watts, not a big difference, but some 100 watts more. And you can watch every single power supply, what it does, is it okay, how much power it delivers, serial number, part number, in case you have to replace one. Then the thermal subsystem. We have 10 fans, they are working at 50, 60, somewhat percent. We see what kind of fan it is, is it okay? By the way, if you think it's loud now, the fans are only at 50 or 60 percent, as you have seen, but what happens if I remove them? It always takes a while until the system area. Now it's going full speed. Maybe I should remove another one. Uh, if I remove too many, the system will start to shut down servers, so I don't want to risk that. I still have the feeling it's not at full speed. Let's see what happens now. Okay, 
Look at that, look at that, fan needed, absent, fan needed, improper location because all the other fans are gone, so it thinks that one is wrong. All kind of yellow lights, red dots, everything not good. Let me refresh that. So we are still not on 100%, it's just 83, but it's getting a little bit noisier. Everything is green again. Here the fans are equalizing, they are coming down in speed, yeah, it gets a little bit more silent. Silence is relative around these things. Okay. Let's run point over the night and see what's happening tomorrow.